Hello and welcome, and welcome to part two of the deep dive into Forks of Lightning. Last time we took a good long look at Ninurta and Ishkur, and we saw some images where the two were holding forked lightning. This time we're going to start out by taking a look at images of forked lightning where the deity isn't necessarily in the image. In this first image, we see what looks to be a human image approaching what is presumably a deity. You will notice the friendly greeting gesture in the human image. More importantly, notice the crescent moon and the two-pronged forked lightning between the two. This represents the presence of the deity without actually having to depict those two deities in this limited space. Occasionally, you'll see substitutes where a deity will not fit in an image. In other images, you will see substitutes almost exclusively. It was conjectured, though not necessarily proven, that this might have been due to a taboo against depicting the deity in human-like form. This is not necessarily proven, as I said. However, during certain periods, we do not really see deity images from these cylinder seals. In this next image, we see a figure in a smiting pose. This figure appears to be smiting what could be a horse or a donkey. Above the equine figure, we see a two-pronged forked lightning. This is from a cylinder seal. Now, if this is a horse, this would be from a later period because horses were not introduced into the region until much later. This next one is really interesting. So this is from the Met Museum. It is called Cylinder Seal with Cultic Scene from late 9th to 7th century BCE and it's Assyrian. Notice that you've got the forks of lightning atop a seated animal. What we're seeing here is an actual image of an ancient Assyrian altar. You also see several other images in the scene that are clearly symbols of deities. For example, you've got the figure that is right behind the figure with the forked lightning, and that figure is also sitting or standing on a platform. Because that figure is standing on a platform, we can surmise that that was a deity altar image. And then you see another one, the image that looks like a spear, which which is again placed on a platform. One figure in here is not placed on a platform and they are in a greeting gesture. You can presume that that is a mortal going to give reverence to the deities, perhaps giving an offering to the deities. The uh, cylinder seal here does not have any text, so we can't tell too much detail. It is really interesting that we can see what these shrines must have looked like in ancient times. Mixed in, you see right in front of the figure above the animal's head is seven dots. Some people assume that these seven dots are a particular constellation. Because we see seven dots that doesn't mean it is a constellation because those seven dots are not in the form that you would see stars in an ancient Mesopotamian image. And this is from the 9th to 7th century BCE. We do have star charts from that time period. So these seven dots are almost certainly not representative of a constellation. These next two images are of boundary stones. The Kuduru, 
or boundary stone, was used to record land grants to vassals, and it was started by the Kassites and later dynasties in ancient Babylon. In this first boundary stone, we see many images that represent the deities. Mostly these images are shrines or physical symbols that would represent the deity that you would literally see in the temple. Up at the top, you see symbols that completely replace these, even these shrine images. And then down at the bottom, you see several creatures that would replace these divine images. You'll notice that on the second level from the bottom, all the way to the left, there is a two-pronged lightning that is sitting on a shrine with a uh, seated animal. This is very similar to the one that we looked at from the last image. Perhaps depicting the same exact object, there might have been an actual statue that would look almost identical to the two that we have seen so far. In the second image of a boundary stone, we see a stylized lightning bolt. This isn't just a fork of lightning that we would see in some of the others. This is a simplified image of the wavy lines. So this is more streamlined. And in this image, we see a number of shrines, but mostly we see symbols that replace the deities. In such objects where we see symbols that replace the deity, the presence of the deity is assumed. This next image is not Mesopotamian exactly. It is Hittite. You will notice that there is a variation on the winged disc at the very top of the image that the forks of lightning that you see are stylized slightly different than what we've seen so far. This would be a Hittite storm god rather than Ishkur or Ninurta. Specifically, this would be a Hittite a storm god analogous to Adad. This is a Another similar image, probably of Teshep, uh, the deity similar to Adad. You'll notice that his headdress is very Egyptian oriented. The forked lightning that he is holding is in his hand and his beard and his clothing are Mesopotamian oriented. That is because the Hittites were able to trade with both cultures. They were able to adopt many features from both cultures. This next one is one of the Arsas stelas. Arsas stelas, as it says from HittiteMonuments.com, the Arsas stelas were found in 2007 near the Ulu Kinar village of Arsas, and I'm sorry for my pronunciation, Hattay, within the territory of a Turkish naval base. The stelas are made of porous basalt and almost identical in size and content. They are in the shape of a rectangular column with a rounded top. Dimensions are approximately 2.2 meters in height and roughly half a meter in width on each side. On the front faces of both is a storm god holding the hand of a male figure, presumably the king, and they are below a winged sun disk. While on Arsas 1, the figures are standing above a stylized plant or tree. On Arsas 2, they are above a bull. On the other three faces of each is the same hieroglyphic Luwian inscription written in nine lines and eight lines respectively. The inscription identifies the author as Supil ul Iuma, which I am sure that I slaughtered there, king of the land of Walastin and son of King Manana. Walastin is the Luyan name of Tel Teyinat based Neohittite kingdom. The text describes the successful campaign of the king against the city of Adana and the land of Hiyawa. They are dated approximately to the end of the 10th century BCE. The stelas are displayed in the Hete Museum. Now, note the style of the art. Note the pose that he is in while he is holding up the symbol of office, i.e. the lightning bolt that we are interested in in this video. Note the variation on the sun disk above his head, and note the rosette at the very top of the image. These are 
are elements that you will see in a lot of Hittite art, and they are distinctive in their style. Although the rosa you can probably find very similar in many neighboring cultures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly longer than I expected deep dive into the lightning symbol in Mesopotamia. Stay tuned next week as we have Boats of the Gods coming right up. Um, that's going to be a really interesting one because some of these boats were uh, depicted as being alive. Anyway, stay tuned and catch you later. Bye-bye.